sisters. Good afternoon. It's a blessing to see all of us here, all the eyes and the faces, yes, covered with masks as we do, but we are so happy to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon, and we also want to welcome you on Facebook and YouTube, wherever you're tuning in from, welcome, and we are here to worship our God and our King, and today here in South Florida in the U.S. is Mother's Day. So we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, whether you are a birth mother, spiritual mother, emotional, mental mother. Put your hands together for mothers today. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So a call to worship is taken from Psalm chapter 122, and it's speaking peace as we're going forward. This is the third Sunday in the Easter celebration, the resurrection celebration. We're going and asking the Lord and dwelling in peace. And it says, may those who love you, O Lord, be secure. May there be peace within our walls and security. And he is our provider, amen? And he is a God that we can go to, we can run to, because he gives us the goodness and the mercy following after us. And so for the sake of my family and my friends, I will say, peace be with you. So turn to the person next to you and just say to them, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, we seek his prosperity. And this is where we come into him to thank God. For he is Jehovah, Jireh, the one who provides. He is also the good God who gives us mercy and goodness that follows after us day after day, night after night, morning after morning. He gives us his goodness, his mercy, and his truth. He is also a God that we can come running to. And today is a place where we worship him in spirit and in truth together, communing together. And that's part of the reason why we have our name is called Grace Communion International, because we're a community that comes together to commune, to unite. And we are filled with grace, covered by grace, and then international, we are all over the world. And so stand together with us. And if you're in your homes, just take a deep breath, the Yahweh breath, Yahweh. And thank God for another day we can worship him. Father God, we come before your throne. We thank you, God, for being a God who is so wonderful to us. Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your strength. Lord, we open our mouths and we breathe in your breath and we breathe out. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for your breath, O oh Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your love true to us every day, Father. And we know, God, that you have given this to us. And so, Father, we are so thankful to you. We are looking toward you, Father, for peace within. And in our homes, we speak it, peace within. And Father, we thank you for today as we celebrate Mother's Day and we celebrate the triumph that we have, Father, through your spirit. We know, oh God, that we have nothing, we can do nothing without you. And so, Father, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Be with your servant who will bring your message today. Open our hearts that we may receive the word and that we may receive it with clarity and with truth in our heart, Father. We want to go forward to, to go forward into the week with the word that is on our heart today. And so, Father, we thank you for forgiveness. We thank you, O oh God, that we can lay our weight before you. We confess our sins before you. We know, O oh God, that we are covered by the blood, and we plead that blood over us right now. And we thank you, God, that when you look down, you see your son, and you do not see our sin, and you remember them no more, and you cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. And so, Father, we thank you, O oh God, for that. We know, God, that we have a moment to give today, Father, and we want to give with a cheerful heart, emulating your way and your nature of joy and of rejoicing. 
And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we say it together. Amen. 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 Turn to the person next to you and say, God is my provider. And he is my truth. a good God. Amen.
encourage you that everywhere we go, and that when we take a moment to stop and think about the goodness of God, we can make an altar there. I know in the Old Testament it was where they would build altars for a sacrifice, and God would have his chosen nation, Israel, to set up an altar to make a sacrifice. And that sacrifice of thanksgiving, that sacrifice of penance for sins, and we know that Christ was the ultimate sacrifice, and he laid down his life for us, that we could have life.
He is worthy, yes. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Well, we have been given an opportunity to give, like I mentioned before, and our welcome. We want to welcome you mothers again, those from far and wide. And we are celebrating life. We're celebrating goodness and mercy, and especially peace within. And as our message will be coming to us very soon, we have an opportunity to give. And we have a few, a number of ways to do that. Um, we do have online giving. There's two ways online. Um, one through our both our denomination uh, website, which is gci.org, and then our local website, gcimiramar.org. We also have text giving, 954-613-2915. And here today in person, since we're here in person, you can also give here. So there's a basket back there, and if you feel so inclined, there is a tray back there. Before you leave, just drop it in there, please. And uh, we won't be passing, but we just want to encourage you that if you have it here, we can uh, receive it from you today right here. So that's checks and cash in an envelope, um, and we will receive that. We thank you so much for your donations. We thank the Lord for opening up our citadels and our storehouses our resources so that we can give and we thank God for that and so a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great and that's from Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 so to open oneself to greatness you must first give and so let's ponder on that and think about that the Proverbs I want to say in my own understanding is like vitamins to the soul and so get your vitamins and stay in the Proverbs. It will lead you and make your soul healthy. So let's go before him and thank him for what he has done. Jesus, we just come before you. We thank you, Lord Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God. Triune God that loves us so much. You have given us your beautiful story and we are part of your story. Thank you, O oh God, for being the light and the light that shines within us it shines bright. And that we can give, O oh Lord, and emulate you. We can imitate you, Father. We can just be just like you. And so we thank you, God, for the giving, the act of giving, and that we have it, Father. And we give it cheerfully with a smile on our face or a smile in our heart. And knowing that we are ushering ourselves into greatness because we are giving. And so we thank you, Lord, once more. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful day of, of worship. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to come together to worship with us. And we want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Let's just give them a big hand. And we do realize and, and take into account what I mentioned last Sunday. Every, every Mother's Day, you have many different emotions that are going on in, in people's lives. There are some people that are excited to be a mother, you know, they have their children around them and they're celebrating Mother's Day and that's wonderful and that's, that's such a blessing and such a joy. We have those who have perhaps even lost their mothers and it's a very difficult day for those who have, have lost their mothers. There may be some that may not have, have the best relationship with mothers, with their mothers or the mothers that may not have the best relationship with their children. There's every category on Mother's Day. And the thing that I want to share with you this morning, even before we go into the message, is no matter what place we find ourselves in, God is right there with you, and he's right there for you. He's not judging you if you don't have a great relationship with your mother, or you are a mother and you don't have a great relationship with your daughter. He's saying, my love in you and for you will manifest what I want to see. If you've lost your mother, God is saying, I am the God of all comfort. I'm the God of all love. And even in the midst of your pain, and even in the midst of your grief, I'm right there with you. Maybe you didn't ever even know your mother. God is saying, I am mother and father, and I will always be there for you. And if you're here this morning and you're celebrating motherhood and you're celebrating your children, 
God says, I'm celebrating right with you and all that I have and all that I can do with you and through you and for you. And so this morning, this afternoon, we come to a passage of scripture. If you would turn with me over to John chapter 10 and verse 22 through 30. And I'd like to welcome you to a divine appointment. A divine appointment where I pray in the name of Jesus as we go through God's word this morning that we will not leave the way we came. That whatever we came with, if we came with the burden, we can release it. If we came looking for something that the Holy Spirit through his word will manifest it. If we need encouragement, that God's word would encourage us. But over in John chapter 10 and verse 22 through 30, and we start in the word of God because it is the word of God on which we take our stand. The word of God that says his word is like rain and snow from heaven that never returns to him without watering the earth, but it, without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish where it gives seed to the sword and bread for the eater. So we read here, then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colony. The Jews who were there gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. Is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. And the father and I are one. Let us pray. Loving Father, we come before your throne in the mighty strong name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your mercy, for your grace, and for your compassion. Thank you for giving us Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for giving us eternal life, Father. Thank you for giving us family members and friends. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for always being there for us, with us, and in us. Lord, we pray as we go through this passage this morning, this afternoon, we pray that our hearts and our lives would be transformed, that we will be encouraged and lifted up, knowing of your great love for us. Lord, we know we hear the statement, there's no love like a mother's love, but really there's no love like your love, because your love is the perfect love. Your love is the perfectly consistent love, and your love is the eternal love. And so, Lord, we pray that as we receive your love, that you would help us to love others with that same love. And so we exalt you this afternoon. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. In the mighty, strong name of Jesus, all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. This morning, this afternoon, as we go to this passage in John chapter 10, we continue this Sunday, third Sunday after Easter, as we look at this passage of scripture where Jesus is besieged. That, that word besieged means they, they surrounded him. They were almost attacking him, upset, because they're asking, if you're the Messiah, why don't you prove it to us and show us that you're really the Messiah? And so just a little background, at this time of the year, it was a winter time of year during Hanukkah, the festival of dedication, and they would gather in the colonnade where they would find warmth, they would come together, and they would listen to the teachings. And as they come together now, this same group of people that were really there to stone Jesus, this same group of people, they come together, and they start out by saying here, then there came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem, it was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. And the Jews who were there, they gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. 
a number of people had come before saying that they were the Messiah, and it was just kind of like a popular thing. And so they were curious that this Jesus who's saying he is the Messiah, is he really the Messiah? And if you're really the Messiah, why don't you prove it to us? Why don't you show us what you have? They were more curious than anything else. And this is what Jesus had to say for all the sheep. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. But before that, he says this, I did tell you, but you didn't believe me. I told you already, but, but you didn't believe me. How many times does Jesus speak into our lives? Well, we just don't believe it. Sometimes we don't believe it from our, because of our own baggage. Sometimes we don't believe because we just don't want to listen. Sometimes we don't believe because we're hard-headed. Sometimes we don't believe because we just don't believe it. Jesus says over and over, I, I, I told you, but you do not believe. You know, God is always trying to speak to us if we're, if we're listening. He's always trying to give us information that will help this journey to be less stressful. He's always trying to give us information so that this journey won't be where we're banging our heads up against the wall over and over again. But I have to be honest, sometimes I just don't believe. Sometimes I just don't hear it. And so I keep experiencing and feeling the same things over and over again. Jesus said, I did tell you, but you did not believe. Because the works I do, I do in my Father's name. They testify about me. Jesus is telling them everything that I've been doing. Every miracle that I've performed, when I raise the dead back to life again, when I turn water to wine, when every miracle that I perform, I was trying to get you a message. I asked a question this afternoon. As we look back on our lives, has, has Jesus been trying to show us the works of the Father in our lives? The things and the blessings that we've received, the miracles that we've Ha that have happened in our life, do we really attribute them to God? Or do we say, well, you know what? That's just kind of how things happen. It was just kind of luck, or it was because of my circumstances or other things. Brothers and sisters, there's no good thing or no miracle that has happened in our lives that God isn't trying to send us the message, I'm there for you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm always going to be there for you. Everything good. Think back. Take a moment right now. Think back to what God has done in your life. Think back to how he's blessed you. Think to where you are right now that you wouldn't be without God. Jesus is saying, I'm doing that so that you can know I am here. There's never going to be a time when we can think and say, you know what? God isn't here for me. There's never going to be a time when he's not going to be there. Every work that happens in your life and mine that is a blessing God is doing to reveal himself, to reveal his son, Jesus Christ, in our lives. The works I do, I do in my father's name. They testify about me. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. What is Jesus saying? Is Jesus saying you don't belong to me? Let me ask you something. If, if, if you... If you claim someone as your own, but they don't claim you, will they ever reap the benefits of what it means to be in relationship with you? You can say you love someone all day long, but if they don't believe it, guess what? They're going to still live in that circle of not feeling what love is really like. So in one sense, humanity belongs to God. But in another sense, only those who accept him as the shepherd will, be, will, be, will benefit from being a sheep as a part of the flock. Only those that truly believe and know that God loves them really begins to understand and walk in the blessings that he has for them. He says, for all the sheep, he says, my sheep, they listen to my voice. Listen to that again. My sheep, 
they listen to my voice. I said earlier that God is always speaking to you and to me. You know, there's nothing that God speaks to our life that's going to be bad for us. It may not feel good on this journey that we're on, but when God speaks to our hearts, whether it be discipline, whether it be encouragement, whatever God speaks to us, whether it be direction, he's saying, if you're my sheep, you're going to listen to my voice. Now, we don't always want to listen to the voice of God, do we? Because why? We, we, we have our own way of doing things. But I don't know about you, but when I try to do it my way, it just doesn't work out the same as listening to the voice of God. My sheep, they listen to my voice. These are promises that we have to understand if we're going to truly be disciples, that when we listen to the voice of God, he leads us in a direction that will bring peace, joy, and goodness. And when we don't listen to his voice, it leads us to a desert land. If you have a flock of sheep and the shepherd is saying, this is where the water is, but the sheep are going where there's desert, guess what? We will thirst to death because the only place where true water is found is in a relationship with God. He opens the door and gives direction to every other aspect of our lives. My sheep, they listen to my voice. You see, if we're his sheep and we have heard his voice, there are things and there are promises that are realities in our lives. They listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. You know, everyone wants to be known, don't they? Whether it be on Instagram, Facebook. I mean, people are, they're almost judged by just how many followers they have. How many followers did I get? How, how many likes did I get? How many people know me? You know, I, I have uh, 200 people that know me. Uh, a thousand people know me. Uh, 2,000 people know me. And the more people know me, guess, the better I feel about me. But guess what? It doesn't matter if I have a million followers. If I don't know my worth in Christ and I don't know who I am, guess what? I'm going to be the most miserable million person followed on the face of this earth. doesn't matter how many likes about fake pictures I put up or, 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 or if people want me or like me or love me. What matters is, is that God, it says here, what does it say? I know them to be known by God. Humans love to drop names, don't they? Who they know, what they know, what do we really know? <laughs> Not a whole lot. If we're honest, we don't really know a whole lot. And if we're really honest, we don't probably know a whole lot of people. <laughs> and if they do, if we do, what does it really mean for us? But to be known by God, the God who knows your name, the God who says, I have plans for your life. And there are plans to bless you. There are plans to open up doors and give you opportunity. There are plans to protect you and keep you from danger and harm. To be known by that God, there is no greater thing. But it just doesn't stop there. He says, my, my sheep Number one, they listen to my voice. Number two, I know them. I know them by name. I know when they rise up, when they fall down. I know every good thing, every bad thing they've ever done. And I still love them unconditionally anyway. And then this is what he says, and they follow me. And they follow me. You know, it's hard to follow God when we're bogged down with all the things that are going on in our world, isn't it? I want to encourage us, brothers and sisters, don't start your day without God. Don't start your day with the clarity of knowing that God is right there with you. And no matter what you experience, God is still in charge. 
Because it's hard to follow God when we're weighted down with all the things that weigh down life. And that's just normal stuff, right? I was reading the other day about sheep and following sheep that 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 if a sheep is so bogged down with, with manure and and his wool and just being too fat just from eating and not just not just not doing anything. That if that sheep lays down to just, you know what, I'm just too bogged down, and he just stops, that the sheep will, will lose balance and roll over on its back, and his feet will be in the air. And guess what? Unless the shepherd turns him over, it will die right there on his back because there's nothing to turn it back over again. You know, sometimes life can weigh us down so much that we just want to lay down and not do anything. If where you are now, you just feel like just laying down and stopping God and saying, oh no, God will turn you over. <laughs> He'll clean you off. He'll shear the unnecessary sheep off, the stuff off of your back, the wool. And he will be there to feed you what you need to have in order to grow the way he desires you to grow. And he says, my sheep, they listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now, following Christ, this is this is the, the, the thing about being about Christianity. And the thing about being a disciple is Christ. Is that God only puts responsibility on you in a sense if you say that you're a disciple. Now I've mentioned this a number of times. Well, if I say I'm a disciple, guess what? I don't get to just do whatever I want to do. I can, but it's not going to get me where I want to go or where I say I want to go. If I say I'm a disciple, I can't just say, you know what? I can treat people any kind of way I want to. I can lie, cheat, steal, kill, and it's no big deal. If I'm a disciple of Christ, there's a certain thing that he says, this is how disciples look. And Jesus said it, didn't everybody? We'll follow you, Jesus. We'll follow you, Jesus. We'll follow you, Jesus. But most of the time, what people are saying is that they want to be a fan of Jesus. They want all the good things that come along with Jesus. But no one wants to do what Jesus says, what it means to be a disciple. Because it's easy to be a fan. Yay, Jesus, that's awesome. But as soon as it comes to what we need to do to be responsible as believers, guess what? We don't want to do that. We just want you to win for us. And as soon as you don't win the way I want you to, I'm not going to say I'm a Dolphins fan. <laughs> way to go, Dolphins, as long as you're a win. <laughs> as soon as they start losing, no longer a fan. But Jesus isn't looking for fans, is he? Jesus doesn't need fans. Neither is God. What he calls for us to be are followers. And this is what he says about followers. If you're going to follow me, what do you have to do? Lay it down. He says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. There are two things in front of that follow that we don't like to hear. <laughs> deny of, of self. How many of you just like to deny yourself just for the fun of it? <laughs> Nobody does. We like to do whatever we want to do. And guess what? If you're not a disciple, you, you may have that. I'll, I'll do whatever I want to do. But if you're a disciple, He's saying the only way that you're going to be benefited as a true disciple is that you're going to have to deny yourself. I can't just do whatever I want to do and act however I want to act if I'm a disciple. He says, if you're going to be my disciple, this is what Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, then you have to deny yourself. And then after you deny yourself, you got to take up that cross. And it's not always easy because we don't always create our crosses, do we? Sometimes we go through things, whether it be abuse or heartache or suffering or loss. We go through all these things that, that can feel like crosses to bear. But Jesus says, I want you to still bear. I want you to deny yourself. And I want you to take up that cross. And then I want you to still follow me. Well, it's hard to follow Jesus. I'm denying myself and now I got to carry a cross. And now I still have to follow Jesus. I would rather not deny myself, not carry a cross. It seemed like it would be a lot easier just to follow Jesus by not denying myself and not carrying a cross because a cross can be really heavy. But Jesus says we're going to be his disciples. 
then we have to deny ourselves. Then we have to take up that cross as difficult as it feels sometimes, and we have to follow him. Loving someone that's unlovable is, is, is like a cross to carry sometimes, isn't it? But he tells us to love our enemies. Pray for those who spitefully use us. What? Then I don't want to be a disciple. I got to pray for somebody that spitefully uses me. I got to pray for my enemies and love them. Then I'd just rather not be a disciple. But that's what we're called to be as disciples and called to live. Can we do it on our own? It's impossible without the power of the Holy Spirit. Try it on your own, loving somebody that's unlovable. Try on your own to, to pray for someone who spitefully uses you. Guess what we're going to end up doing? Fighting them in the middle of the street. <laughs> Punching them in the head. <laughs> I get too excited when I talk about fighting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you see our natural nature. You might see mine. <laughs> Would you all see the Holy Spirit version 20% of the time? <laughs> But without the Holy Spirit, I don't think any of us want to see each other. <laughs> we'll be mayhem and craziness up in here, wouldn't it? But if we're a disciple, he calls on us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow him. To follow God's way. To follow the way of unconditional love. To follow the way that seems unseemly in our society today. Society says, get back, do one for one, tit for tat. I'm going to pay you back. The Bible says, forgive. I don't know about you all, but whenever I do it the Bible's way, even if it don't feel right, and even if the initial part doesn't look right, it always works out for the way best, doesn't it? Like way better than I could ever even have hoped. Like God, how do you even know that if I do it your way, it's going to work out? Because your way don't feel right. And it don't look right right after, but if I do it your way, it always turns out amazing. Yes, and God's like, because I've been here forever, knucklehead. <laughs> and I know the end of a matter before it begins. How about that? How about I made all the infinite universes and I created you and I know what works best for human beings because guess what? I made you. How about that? I made your brain. I made your body. I made everything about you. Don't you think I know a little bit about how to do and what to give you to really make you the best you can be? You know, like, I, I guess God, you know. <laughs> you got me on that one. Fair enough. <laughs> and follow me. And then this is what he says. These amazing promises for believers. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And they listen to this amazing gift. And I give them eternal life. Wow. Oh, wow, that's amazing. This, he said, I, they listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. Now, I, we say eternal life. Like, I say the term eternal life, and I may get excited about it, but guess what? I don't know what it means. I can't conceptualize what eternal life really is because if you ever heard of plane geometry, and I know you have, but plane geometry is where you have a plane here, a plane here, and this plane can't conceptualize what's on this plane because all they can understand is what's on this plane. And we live in this physical realm of this physical plane that we really can't understand eternity, but we do know it somehow means forever and never ending, something wonderful and good and positive that we can't really conceptualize when we talk about it. But he says when we follow him, he gives us eternal life. I'm down for some eternal life. I give them eternal life. Eternal life is a gift to be received and a gift to share. It's a gift that we have received from God unconditionally, not based on how good we are, what we've done, not based on anything about our pedigree, where we were born, anything else about us. Eternal life is a free gift that comes from Jesus Christ. And it's a free gift because he loves humanity, not just Christians. He loves humanity. It's a huge blanket of God's love. He says, I love humanity, and I give them eternal life. And this is what he says. Something about eternal life here, they shall never perish. 
they shall never perish. I don't, I don't know, but I don't, if this life, if we had to live this life forever, I'm already tired. I'm 54 years old. My feet hurt sometimes. I did a cartwheel on the day, my back hurt. If we got to live this life forever, next but that's why he's saying there's something I have for you, something eternity that, that, that when you pass that's greater than anything you've ever known. I'm, I'm, I, that's what I want. I don't want to come back as anything else either. One, one time in this life is enough, isn't it? Got to keep coming back. No, I'm sorry. You can have that. I want one shot. I just want to do it one time. And now I want to go home. <laughs> He says, they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them from our hands, from his hands. No one will snatch them out of my hand. We realize that being a part of the flock is, is a gift to be received and a gift to be shared. And eternal life is eternal. You know, the Bible says this is eternal life, that you know God. You know his son, Jesus Christ. And to know God is eternal life. You know, when we know God, when we recognize that God loves and knows us, we get a chance to experience what eternal life is like here on this earth. We get a, a chance to experience love and friendship and joy and relationships in a way that, that, that will resemble heaven in a very imperfect way. But we get to enjoy eternal life because of Christ who lives in us and gives us the Holy Spirit and allows us to love and grow the way we were designed to from the very beginning. That is the love that God has for humanity. And then he says this, we're secure in the hands of the Father and the Son. No one will ever snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. God says that we're secure in his love. There's nothing that you can do to get outside of the love of God. Isn't that amazing? That you, you can say, well, how about this? No, how about that? No. He says, nothing can snatch you out of my hand. That's how great God's love is for you and for me. Look what it says here in this passage. It's probably one of those memorized passages of Scripture. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, not death, not life, not angels nor demons, not even the supernatural. You see how powerful God is saying that when we're in the hands of the one who created the multiple infinite universes, he says, I know you by name and I have you in the palm of my hand. I can guide you. I direct you. I'm always going to be with you. That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future. So what does he say? The, the present, no matter where you are right now, no matter what happens in your future. Well, what if this happens? What if I do it? He's saying, no, nothing. Nor powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in who? Christ Jesus, our Lord. Doesn't this ring, this passage in Romans, it rings like Ephesians. When it talks about the height and the depth and the width of the love of God, that's the love that God has for you and for me and for humanity, that he says nothing can separate you from his love. How can we love people with that type of love? The only way we can love people with that type of love is that we have to have received it from God. Because we will love in the flesh every time. You hit me, I'm going to hit you back. You don't do me right, I'm going to do you wrong. I, and that way does not work. Look around. All you have is war and heartache and pain and suffering. Why? Because we try to love the way we want to love. A fleshly love is so selfish and so centered. But God's love is unconditional. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, 
our Lord. We need fear no thing and no one, for we're in the hands of the loving Father, safe and secure. Jesus and the Father are one, united in will and purpose, and this is the good news of the shepherd to his sheep. When Jesus says, I and my Father are one, He's talking about the unity of will and purpose. If we have the love of Jesus, we have the love of the Father. If we have the love of the Father, we have the love of the Holy Spirit. The triune God is one. We have the love of God that says you are safe and secure in my hands. No matter what happens, I got you. No matter what you experience, I got you. No matter how many times you fall, I got you. When you get back up, I got you. And when you're having a great time and you're happy and you're filled with joy, everything is going great, I got you. But when things are going horrible and you feel like throwing in the towel and you feel like giving up, God is saying, I got you. Saying no matter what happens, you are safe in my hands. If you believe it. If you believe it. as sheep of the loving shepherd. And this is the good news of a good shepherd. Though our lives might sometimes look like the drama of a TV series. How many of your lives have looked like that before? Let's be honest, mine have. <laughs> But we don't have any cliffhangers. We don't need to wring our hands in anticipation of how the story ends. Because God tells us that our story is always going to end great. Because we're right in the palm of his hands. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Loving Father, we come before your throne in the mighty, strong name of Jesus. We thank you, God for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your compassion. And thank you for your word. Lord, your word encourages us. It is your word that we can go to and we can be lifted up. And it's your word that we can go to and we can know that you're right there with us. It is your word, Heavenly Father, that, that we can go to and know that we can be encouraged and that we can stand on it because it's always true. And so we thank you this afternoon for the wonderful gift of your son, Jesus Christ. A gift to be received and a gift to share. And we thank you for the blessing of eternal life that comes to us through Jesus Christ. Thank you for Holy Spirit living us, giving us strength to live out the love that you've called us to live it out because we just can't do it on our own. And so Lord, we thank you that we are safe and that we are secure in all eternity in the hands of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we honor you, and we love you. In the mighty strong name of Jesus, all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Today is Mother's Day, and we want to celebrate the mothers. I did have an, an announcement before we go into this part of the celebration. And I wanted to share this. It's not a happy announcement, but it's, it's a little sad. But it's an announcement because I know it impacts so many of us. We had to, a, a funeral to perform last night for one of our members' father that passed. On the way home from the funeral, we got another phone call from a really close friend of ours that was telling us that Mrs. Bass, that many of you all know, who's like a mother to all of us in so many ways, that she was uh, that she was transitioning. So we had an opportunity to talk to her last night and to, to see her smile. And then we got a call this morning that she transitioned. So it's like every week, <laughs> something else. But God is loving and powerful and real, and we celebrate the life that she and Mr. Bass had for so many of us. I've never seen a man who served like Mr. Bass that set an example of humility and love and dignity at a time when people treated him like you have no idea. 
But what an incredible, successful, amazing man. And his wife was the same. She loved, she gave, she served. And you would never tell that that island lady was 90 something years old, would you? So she went home to be with the Lord with a smile on her face. And so we may be somewhat sad, but we are filled with joy that she is in eternity with her Father in his loving hands. Amen? Amen, amen. So at this time, we do have a, a presentation, but we have just a brief a brief tribute to our mother. It's going to be brought to us. It's going to read it by Marshall Mitchell and then a prayer from Mr. Mitchell. But I want you all to just take a moment as they come on up to the stage at this time. Just kind of look back, if you can, all the all the men back here, Mr. Williams, is, and I want to just go back there, just stand back, stand up real quick, because the, these are these are the men. Not everyone is here today, but these are the men of our congregation. We are we just want you all to know that we love you. We're here to serve you, and to be here for you in every way we can. Back here, we have fathers. We have grandfathers, we have great-grandfathers, we have uncles, we have brothers, we have all these groups. We have our, our young ladies, some of that are not mothers yet, they will be one day, if that is God's will. But we just want to let all of you mothers know, mothers, aunts, mentors, how much we love you, that we're here for you. We look forward to serving you all afterwards with just a small little lunch for you all. But we love you all, and we're here for you. Marsha. Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing this afternoon? this blessed Mother's Day. So I'm going to do a little reading for you guys. A mother's love is forever and she is always by your side through any struggles, just like God. Just like God's love will never leave us, their love will never leave us. A mother's love remains strong despite the hardships that may occur during life. God's love can be felt through a mother's love. God himself said that as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. She will always be there for you, even when you are separated by time and space. When a mother serves her family well, she will earn eternal gratitude of her children and spouse. Strength and honor are her clothing. Her mouth is full of wisdom. Kindly teaching is on her tongue. She is vigilant over the activities of her household. She doesn't eat the food of the laziness. The Lord wants us to remember the teachings of our mothers and always carry that wisdom with us. The Bible is clear that we should not neglect our mother's teaching, for they are a graceful wreath on your head and beads for your neck. They instill good virtues in their children and develop a strong moral character in our lives. Becoming a mother is a blessing and to bear or care for children is to receive a gift from the Lord. Receiving the love of a mother is also a gift from God. Honor them, respect them, and you will live a fulfilled life. Even if you are facing obstacles in your relationship with your mother, keeping faith in God and having hope will see better things in the future. A mother who lives well and raises her children well should be celebrated. The Bible tells us to celebrate her deeds. Show your mother love, patience, kindness, and faithfulness as she does to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Her 
Praise the Lord. I offer a brief and humble prayer in honor of all the mothers today, all the mothers past, present, and future. For truly, where would we be without our mothers? Lord, we thank you this morning for all the mothers. We thank you, Lord, for the pains that they bore. We thank you for them bringing us forth and comforting us through all the times that we need comfort. We thank you, Lord, for all that they've done and continue to do. We could not be here without our mothers. Bless them, Lord, we pray. Bless them, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord. Pour them out a special blessing, Lord. Yes. Bless them, Lord. We thank them for all the sleepless nights, Lord. For all the toil and pain and suffering. We thank them for raising us up from the time they pushed us forth from their womb, Lord. Where you needed us together and put us that we may be brought forth by them into this world. Though we don't belong to them, we belong to you. And they're just stewards. They're just our caretakers, Lord. And they answer to you, their God. And we thank you for them, their God. Thank you. Bless them, we pray, O oh Lord. Bless all the mothers, past, present, and future. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And we're going to just take one more minute to play something for you guys. I'll ask if you guys can just close your eyes and listen to this. Couldn't have our sister or our brother without our mothers. Royal Queens is our mothers. Teaching us to love and respect each other. Great example of a woman to be. Some are even fathers, as you may hear or see. Life struggle for you, had her in her teens. And sometimes we don't get it, so they act a little mean. <laughs> but we must all keep in mind the sacrifice and the grind, the tears and the time sacrificed by our mothers for us. So if she ever scream of us, smile, give her a hug, and let her know that you know the reason she goes so hard is for us. Where would we be without our mothers? Thank you. By young R3, God rest his soul. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. So at this time, Mr. Lanier is going to be working with the men to serve serve you all. So we're going to ask if all of our mothers, we have your have it set up for you all over here. If you all could just the mothers, if you could just have you all could move over here to this table, if you don't mind. Greetings to the beautiful smile of the mothers. What an opportunity that we have that we can be able to serve our mothers. What a pleasure and an honor to have this opportunity. We want to congratulate each and every one of you. So we ask you to enjoy and we want to be of service to you all today. Thank you. <laughs> 